First lesson, a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you and inherit as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you have harvested from the land that the Lord, the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was an ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power, and with <clears throat> signs and wonders, he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of this fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. We'll read our psalm today responsibly. I'll read to the asterisk, and I invite you to complete each verse. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, he shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold. My God is my trust. Because you have made me the Lord your refuge. And most high habitation. There shall no evil happen to you. Neither shall any plague come near your God. For he shall give his angels charge over you. To keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. You shall trample upon the lion and the serpent. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. The second lesson is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The world is near you, on your lips, and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so justified, one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is number 24, Abide With Me. Please stand.
Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. And then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I will give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. <clears throat> Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the very pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. There's uh, an awful lot going on. In, in this gospel this morning. Um, when you see 40, 40 days, 40 nights, it's repeated over and over again. 40 years in the wilderness, the people of Israel wandered uh, from Egypt to the land that was promised to them. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights during the flood. 40 means a, a time of preparation for something brand new. So this is a time of preparation for Christ as he's in the wilderness. And Satan comes to him and tempts him. A reminder that although Jesus is Lord and fully divine, he's also fully human as well. Otherwise, he wouldn't have any temptation. And the very nature of a temptation is, is that the temptation's real. <clears throat> that the person who's being tempted, part of them is pulled towards that and they have a decision to make. A decision to go one way or another or various different ways, but to fail. And the temptations here are very interesting. There's three, of course. And then the first one being the most obvious one, Jesus hasn't eaten in 40 days, he's famished, and the devil comes to him with a very easy one, turn the stone into a loaf of bread and eat, it's this very carnal sort of materialistic temptation. Jesus quotes scripture to him, that you don't live by bread alone, so the devil tries a different tack, raises him up and shows him all the kingdoms and principalities of the world and says, I've been given authority all of all of these, and I will give you power over all of them if you will worship me. And then once again, the temptation for power. And Jesus quotes scripture again. And the devil draws back, comes back in a third time to try something different, takes him to the top of the temple, and then quotes to him, you know, it's been written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so you will not dash your foot against a stone. And then Jesus again quotes scripture, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And that finally drives the devil off. So you have a very material, bodily need, that one, Christ uses scripture to, to banish. The second one is a will to power, which is universal all the way through history, you can see this. Certain people just succumb to power. And when they have power, they want more power. This is a very, very harsh temptation. Once again, the devil is thwarted by Christ quoting scripture to him. The third one is quoting scripture wrong. Or in a way it shouldn't be quoted, taking it out of context. This one we should especially be on guard as Christians. Twisting scripture to try to make it mean what it doesn't mean. Once again, Jesus brings him back, the devil. Now, the devil knows all of these are lies, right? There's, there's three things I want to talk to you 
today about. And one of them is the fact that the devil never produces anything good on his own. Never has and never will. He gives the illusion of it. He takes something that God has created good and he corrupts it. And the more beautiful the thing is that's corrupted, the worse a crime it seems to be. Why is sexual assault such a terrible crime? Because it's something given to us by God that is supposed to be beautiful in its content. To corrupt that, the destruction of innocence of a child. Are there any worse than these things? And then the devil tries to paint them up that they're going to be better than the original. And in fact, they're hollow, they're empty. They're like a shell or a mask. There's nothing inside of them. The devil can give us nothing good. He has nothing. The Lord, when we die, has in his hand pleasures forevermore for us. Spiritual ones. Ones of growth, eternal growth in the Lord. The devil has nothing except illusion, smoke and mirrors and lies. That's the most important thing. The second one is, there's a, a, a priority always that Christ placed on the spiritual, above the material, and the carnal. This world will pass away. All of us, like grass, will wither and pass away. But our spiritual being will live forever. The kingdom of God is at hand, and we are living into the kingdom of God until it's fully realized at the end of time. The devil would make you think that the most important things are the here and now. Now, yes, we have to render unto Caesar. We have one foot in both. But what, what, what foot are you putting your weight on? Which direction are you prepared to jump? Jesus is always bringing us back. The wilderness, by the way, always represents in Scripture. The wilderness and the open water. Chaos. Chaos. You know, you've crossed the River Jordan... You go from the land of plenty that was given to the people of Israel, and you end up in the wilderness, the chaos. And that's where J Jesus is. The chaos of our lives and the myriad of temptations that we face throughout our entire lives, and on a daily basis. Small and big. The third thing is, is that all the answers that we need are in Scripture. Scripture contains everything sufficient for our salvation. Just remember that. Scripture contains everything sufficient for our salvation. Because people will play that game with me on. What about this? What about that? What about this saying or that saying that's outside of Christianity? Listen, truth is truth. Will you find it elsewhere? Absolutely you do. But those truths don't contradict the truth found in Scripture. And if they do, go with the truth found in Scripture. Everything we need for our salvation. So what, what else do you need? What else do you need to talk to others about? What else do you need to pray about? What else do you need to discuss? Now we do. I love Shakespeare. And I love a lot of different things. Once again, what foot do I put my weight on? Jesus here foils every attempt with Scripture. He turns every attempt to make the material world the more important world... And he spins it back. And the devil is a liar. In the Eastern tradition, that's basically his title. The, the title he used most often is the great deceiver. And that's the one we have to be on guard for because, as I said last week, we're often quite good at lying to ourselves. And it get, we get better at, as we practice. I'll give, you a, I'll give you an innocuous one. Innocuous one. Um, have you ever had a situation, especially when you're younger, and you didn't do it the way, you didn't say the things you want to say, you didn't act the way you wanted to act? So you'll kind of, over time, spin it. I got, I got into an argument with somebody, I said a kind of a dumb thing, but in the end, I mean, I kind of made my point, and then five years later, that turns into, man, I put that person in their place, and then ten years later, it turns into a whole room full of people I was having this broad discussion with, and... And by, by the time you're 80, you're in a stadium full of people that you're just you're trying to shout you down. And, and you'll remember it that way, right? Because that's what you tell to other people. You tell a story. How does everyone else's voice sound to yours? 
This lady thought I had stolen her parking spot, and I said, excuse me, ma'am, I, I was here first. And she said to me, that parking spot was there! And we always give them the, the witch voice. <laughs> right? They have this crazy person voice, and you're all dead calm. Of course you were, you know, absolutely calm and rational and mature. <laughs> oh, that, you know, ma'am, sorry, excuse me, but I, I believe I had that spot. And she said, yeah! Don't you do that in a story? Everyone has a, they sound like a crazy person in your stories, right? And then you know they're at their house telling their family about you and you're the crazy person. So, all kidding aside, this time of Lent's a time of reflection. It's a, it's a time to examine ourselves for the things that we may be telling ourselves that aren't 100% accurate, but it's just you and God. Both of you know the truth, right? And, and God, wants a, God wants a change to you. Wants you to move forward and not be in pain. You know, the lies, the, the satisfying as they are in the, in the moment sometimes, they, they kill you. Death by a thousand cuts. And I'm not talking about big ones. I'm not talking about adultery and fraud and... I'm talking about the small ones that we lie to ourselves. You know, I pray enough. Do you? Do you? You might. Hey, you might. Probably many of you do. I bet all of you don't. I talk to other people about my faith and scripture, and I try to apply it when I'm watching the news or reading something or seeing a, a TV program. I try to bring it back and compare it to scripture and what I've been taught. Do these little exercises. Just use this time to kind of build yourself up. Because there's a lot that tries to knock you down. And there's a lot of things that over time are just to have a corrosive effect on your spirit. So embolden yourselves. It's a time to strengthen ourselves. And remember, everything, everything in Scripture is sufficient for your salvation. Please stand. our faith together as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. And we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church throughout the world, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those preparing for baptism, for their teachers and sponsors, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees and prisoners, and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. 
For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. This week in our parish, we pray for Sharon, Sharon Gordon, Don, Don Bradley, Bradley, and Sharon, Sharon Bradley, 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 Gertrude Bradley, Brown, Sean and Rosemary Brown. Brown. We pray for the sick and those in need of healing. Richard, Rod, Rita, Diana, Craig, Judy, Kevin, Doreen, Ernie, Gloria, and Audrey. We pray for the greater world community, especially the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. And we pray for a prayer for you, the Ukraine. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray, we pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and he is infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you all. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Merciful God, turn us from sin to faithfulness. Accept our offering and prepare us to celebrate the death and resurrection of Christ your, our Savior. Who is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth because you bid your faithful people to cleanse their hearts and to prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. That reborn through the waters of baptism and renewed in the Eucharistic mystery, we may be more fervent in prayer and more generous in the works of love. Therefore, we raise our voices to you in praise to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you to please be seated or to kneel. Remain standing if you wish for the prayer of consecration. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the Word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, 
He gave it to them and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. We break this bread, communion in Christ's body, once broken. Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying. If we have died with him, we shall live with him. If we hold firm, we shall reign with him. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In this holy bread, you increase our faith and hope and love. Lead us in the path of Christ, who is your word of life. We ask this in his name. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. As you go forth into the world today, may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may they see Christ's face in you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I guess a uh, slippery uh, little thing out in the parking lot, so tread carefully on your way back out. It was a lot to spread the... Uh, gravel but John did a nice job on the, on the steps and everything so thank you John for that <laughs> um, so parish council meeting last Sunday it went very well we had a few little glitches in our uh, you know in the technical part but uh, not not many so everything came through clear and uh, it went very well our first parish council meeting will be on Thursday night 
at seven o'clock for the new uh, council. I'll just go over uh, quickly who is on council, in case you didn't uh, get to hook in yet uh, last Sunday. So uh, appointed positions, uh, myself, I'm on my second year as Rector's Warden, and Mary Lee Clark for God's Garden. And um, then we have um, Stephen Willop, Willits, who's our new People's Warden. Give a, there, good. And uh, William Passmore, year one, Synod Rep. And um, Harry Mercer, Synod Rep, year one. Uh, Arlene Simonovich will be uh, the representative on Alter Guild. I will be the representative for our ACW. Ryan Dalloway is the bookkeeper and the fundraising rep. And uh, Liz Hall will remain as the outreach rep. Bob Lomas is our envelope secretary and stewardship. And uh, new to council this year is Barbara Cordukes. She's going to be a member at large. And uh, Nicole Dalloway will be a member at large and a synod alternative. And um, anyway, uh, we're happy to have new people on and uh, it'll be an exciting year again as hopefully we're opened up a little bit more than we were last year doing everything by Zoom. Now, our, uh, for the rest of the announcements, the jar for the loonies for Lent is it right at the back where the collection plate always is. And uh, they don't have to be loonies. They could be bills or <laughs> four quarters <laughs> or eight quarters. Anyway, I just grabbed a bunch of change and went like that. But anyway, the loonies for Lent jar is there. That goes to the Stittsville Food Bank and uh, they appreciate that every year. So during the whole time of Lent, uh, Bonnie will make sure that that jar is out there and uh, we'll fill it up as much as we can. God's Garden is online and in person, so if anybody's listening, uh, make sure to see it online. It's under St. Thomas, and uh, that uh, always is an interesting program with the crafts and the stories. Our fun script orders are due today, so um, if you have uh, an order, you can give Nicole a call. She uh, will be taking those orders and putting them in tonight. And um, ACW tomorrow at one o'clock, we're gonna start up again. And um, so uh, Arlene Simonovich is going to come and I've asked them to uh, talk to us a bit about what Alter Guild does. And uh, so that we're aware of it because so many, if we haven't been on Alter Guild, we don't really know. So she's gonna explain that and we'll have a, be fun to get together again. Um, our outreach, for this month are ladies and men's underwear, and those are for down at the missions. Um, now, uh, I want you to look at the new Lenten banners. Um, they are just beautiful. I felt the material too, and are they ever nice. They um, were purchased for us as a thank you from Tanya Drew and Hilary Scholdice, and uh, Thank you so much to those ladies for making that possible. <laughs> and um, last but certainly not least with the uh, things for, that's going on in Ukraine, it's just terrible. And uh, that uh, Mary um, has, uh, Passmore has, is spearheaded us collecting things to take down to uh, downtown to the church down there and the, from the for that Russian invasion that's happening and uh, if you there's a list that Bonnie made up and put it in each of the bulletins and if you could take a look and see if there's any way you could help we can help financially we can help by just giving certain items but they are that Syria are going to be set or they're going to be in such need and uh, we certainly need to help the Ukrainians during this time because it's a terrible disaster. Thank you. Just uh, very quickly, uh, uh, two points. Uh, keep the, uh, the Russian people in your prayers uh, as well. Um, there's quite a bit of evidence that 
at least a high proportion of their soldiers have been lied to. They were told, the ones coming in through Belarus, that they were on training exercises. And a lot of them were very surprised to find themselves in Ukraine and being fired upon. Uh, they shouldn't be there. I'm not saying that. I'm simply saying that the leadership is 100%. The Russian leadership is absolutely at fault for all of this. But uh, pray for the Russian people because they're going to have a very, very hard time financially, economically. So keep them in your prayers along with, uh, of course, the Ukrainian people as well. Um, starting this Wednesday for the next four weeks, we're going to have some educational um, Wednesday night educational sessions uh, beginning this first Wednesday at 7 o'clock uh, just in the, the hall here, the, the small hall. Um, I'm going to be looking at some of the Old Testament, the, the better known stories, and kind of unpacking them a little bit. We're going to start with uh, Genesis chapters 1 and 2. So if you're interested in that, just please show up 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. Thank you. Closing hymn is number five, excuse me, 458. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Please stand. Thank you. 